Oh man, I'm really sorry to hear you're not doing too well. Yeah, man, this holiday season has got me so stressed out. Like, I've got so much on my plate and I'm not handling any of it well. Oh, you know what you need. What? No, don't, don't A coping say it. saw. Don't. <laughs> get it? Coping saw? Can we just get to the video, man? You're not please? coping very well. Can we, can we please just get to the video. <laughs> So if you followed my Instagram, at Lauer Artworks, recently I posted a poll asking what you guys would like to see for my next project. Hand tools or power tools? And overwhelmingly, you chose hand tools. Oh no, I had to go out and buy new tools. How awful. So if you don't know what a coping saw is, it's basically this. It's got a thin metal blade that's tensioned between this large rod that has a space in the middle called a cope. And what this does is allow you to turn around inside your workpiece and really get access to all of those little inside parts of your project. It's really good for cutting things like scroll work, if you need any fancy curves. The coping saw will do a really good job of coping with that difficult project. So the first thing that we're going to want to make before we actually start our project is creating a coping saw jig or sometimes called a V-board. And what this does is supports your workpiece off the table. You can clamp it to your workbench and it allows you to get inside your cut and gives you access to all those fancy little curves and corners. Now the coping saw itself allows you to turn the blade as you're working, which is really handy for getting those fine curves and that scroll work. But the V-board gives you extra access while also supporting your project. The material I used for this project is some leftover trim that I had from some projects around the house. And honestly, you can use whatever scrap wood you have lying around. The next thing we're going to want to do is sketch out some of the designs that we have onto our board. What I'm trying to do here is make something that resembles like a Christmas cookie. So perfection isn't really all that important. In fact, it's kind of nice if you have a little bit of a lumpy design. It makes that cookiness a little bit more believable. Once you've got your designs all laid out, then you're going to want to begin cutting each line one at a time. And just keep working your way around the project until you get the entire thing cut out. Keep in mind you may need to reclamp as you go, but that's just part of the process. If you'd like to see me do more videos on hand tools and techniques in the future, let me know in the comments section. I really want this to come off as like Christmas cookie frosting decoration. Milk paint is going to work great for this purpose because it goes on super thick, it has a matte finish, and it just looks like frosting. I mean, it does look like frosting and it is actually non-toxic, although I would not recommend you eat it. Now cookie frosting requires food coloring. For the food coloring, we're going to be using this product called Unicorn Spit. What this stuff is, is basically a concentrated gel stain. And like the milk paint, it's also rated as being non-toxic. And just like regular food coloring, keep in mind that a little of this stuff goes a very long way. What you may want to do for your own decoration is test varying amounts of unicorn spit and milk paint and see which colors and which concentrations you can come up with for your own decoration ideas. To paint this on, I went a little bit unorthodox and I used cotton swabs as paint brushes. You of course can use paint brushes if you like, but I really like the effect that cotton swabs have where it sort of mops the paint on in kind of this sloppy, frosting-like fashion. It happened to be a really cool effect, and it was also really great for adding little dots and decorations for ornaments and snowman noses and lumps of coal. And Now I gotta say, this video is not sponsored in any way, but if you like this content and you want to see more of it, make sure you hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. And who knows, maybe in the future I could offer some cool discounts on some neat products. You know, just putting it out there. 
So once all your decorating is done and your paint's dry, you need some way to attach a hook or a ribbon so that you can hang this thing on your tree. What I recommend is drilling a hole in the top and to do that, I used a smaller drill bit to drill a pilot hole before following that up with a larger drill bit. That just gives you a much better result and it's less likely that your hard work is going to end up split apart in your hands. So my awesome wife went out and bought some baker's twine, which looks super festive. You can use some cord or some ribbon, you know, whatever you like to give that holiday touch. What I really like about this Christmas cookie project is that you don't need to be a super talented painter or a really skilled woodworker to pull this off. It can be as simple or as decorative as you like, and these techniques can easily translate to other projects you may want to tackle. I gotta say, I really enjoyed making this project, and don't they just look delicious? Like, seriously, good enough to eat, right? If you follow my 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 thing online, the 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 the, 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 the. <laughs> Okay. <laughs>